Hospitals are uniquely haunted. And we heard the most god off the screen. It was sickening. We've got our work cut out for us, and this place is massive. They'd see a shadow, we'd go after it. There would be nothing in there. <laughs> this child's got knickers on. Standing right there in the doorway is a little girl with hospital gown on. This energy is just really thick up here. So as soon as we yes. cross the threshold, yes. that's why I was like, Whew. right behind me. Hello? Dude, that's all the way. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Yes, I did. That's what I was hearing. It's upstairs. So pay attention, listen, the hospital talks. There's a box in my hand if you'd like to try and use it to speak to me. Okay. Come in. Holy dude. Dude, dude right when you just went in. Footsteps. Whoa. Scream says waiting. Oh, man. Oh, what? Waiting on a room. All right, Jason, we are in Harriman, Tennessee. And unfortunately, Dave couldn't be here because he got sick. And so the two of us are gonna be joining forces with another group of investigators who also have a YouTube channel, which we'll meet here in just a few minutes. We are going to be investigating one of the largest buildings that we've investigated in years. Yes. The old historic Harriman Hospital. Are you ready for this? Are you excited? Oh my God, man, it's, it's, uh, this is gonna be fun. We've got our work cut out for us. And this place, like you say, is massive. I believe around 168,000 square feet. Yes, 168,000 square feet. And we've yet to see this place. And I think that's the most exciting part of it. I mean, you think of the number of people who would have passed away here and just the energy left behind in these walls. Hospitals are uniquely haunted. And I am so excited to get in here tonight and see what we capture. It's gonna be awesome, man. It sure is. Oh shoot, there it is. Right oh, here to our right. Man. Oh man. And there are the boys that we are gonna be joining forces with right up here. They're straight ahead, right there. <laughs> Hey. Hi. Hey. How's it? How's it going, boys? Hello. Oh, I know it is huge, isn't it? It's crazy. Nice to meet you, Ryan. Nice to meet you, Noah. Noah, nice to meet you. Jason, nice to meet you. Noah. Noah, Jason, nice to meet you. Are you guys ready for this tonight? Yes. Yes, Dude, we I'm are. I'm so excited, man. This is gonna be crazy. It is. This is. Wild. So, have you seen the backside of it yet? Not it's yet. It's like two city blocks long, dude. It's, it's absolutely crazy. That is wild. Check out this aerial view. There's no doubt, the old Harriman Hospital is a massive structure. Construction started in the 1930s, and throughout the hospital's long history, more and more was added until it reached the sprawling size that it is today. Before our investigation begins, we'll have to be acquainted with the layout and history. Three volunteers and paranormal investigators named Rhonda, Chris, and Heath will walk us through the hospital to share why they believe the building holds paranormal activity. This is the lobby of the new part. It's four floors. This was open 1990, 1991. What was in the old part, they moved over here. They moved the emergency room. They moved uh, ICU and they moved heart ward over here. So everything was moved here and it opened up the old part for patients rooms. But our tour is gonna start here in the emergency room. This here was triage, right here at the nurse's oh, station. This is where you came in and registered. That's Olivia. And that's Olivia, and Harry is her friend sitting next to her. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is only the first part of the hospital that we've seen, and we're shocked to find out the emergency room holds a very unique feature. One that ensured safety and confinement while medical treatment was administered. Behind you in this corner room, is a lockdown, it's drugs, alcohol, a prisoner, anybody that was rowdy got put in this room. This has a locked door. 
This is where the police officer stayed outside of the guard. This is padded, the bed. Then they have hooks to chain the patient to. Who knows what kind of energy this could leave behind inside this room. The confinement conditions of a correctional facility collide with the healing and caregiving of a hospital. While it was necessary to keep patients and staff safe, that conflict could still be soaked into these walls. And uh, we've got two rooms that were temporary morgues because we didn't have a morgue here. So if someone were to be injured in a car accident, house fire, God knows whatever would happen to them, they would have probably came through there. Yep, this is the ambulance bay. Uh, when the power's turned on, the doors actually automatically open with a keypad. So the ambulance people would pull up and the door would open for them. And then the patient was brought in here on a gurney to whatever room they were told to put the patient in. And if anybody passed and they came by ambulance, they come through this door and that was just long enough for the doctor to uh, do a death certificate and they would call you in and say, we tried to resuscitate, we couldn't, uh, I'm sorry, they've passed. And one of the really cool paranormal things that happens right through here is there was a team had set up some cameras and stuff here one night and they were actually live streaming and they caught this great big huge shadow that come around that corner and come all the way up through here and went back out that way. These are surgery rooms. These are massive inside, they're big. We have three surgery rooms here. We have seen shadows move across the door. We saw a shadow behind you at the nurse's station. And this is the recovery, outpatient recovery. So when you had any kind of minor surgeries, you came in here and had it done here in any of these three rooms, recovered there, and then you were sent home. If something happened in between, you went down the long wrap to another room and that's where you stayed overnight if something happened after surgery. Hospitals are uniquely haunted. People are born here and people mourn here. People live here and people die here. This could leave behind a lasting energy that replays itself through shadows, voices, apparitions, footsteps, and many other types of paranormal activity. So the question is, do these walls contain intelligent spirits? And can they see us? Yeah, we were uh, here before he bought the hospital and we were investigating it. And uh, one, of the, one of the ladies that was with us, she saw someone turn the corner over here and go through the what was the uh, nurse's dressing room. So we went after them and we circled around hearing doors shut and everything. And then we think where we got him cornered was in here in this room because the door shut and we go in there and no one's there. Like someone was in here, but there was nobody yeah. else in here. Yeah, they'd see like, see a shadow cut through the doorway and stuff and we'd go after it and there would be nothing in there. And one night we were in here painting, getting ready for a film. And me and one of the other volunteers were in here painting, and we heard the most god-awful scream. It was sickening. I mean, it probably lasted 10 or 15 seconds. We, it was close, but we couldn't tell where it was from. This is the heart ward. There's two wards. This side was uh, the heart ward critical. They had nurse's station right here. You're all hooked up to meters. They were all lined up and they watched you from here. This is where I stayed twice, was well, twice a year. Once a week I stayed here. I was a heavy smoker and I stayed on this side facing the building across the street. People did pass here. I was here when people passed, but you do have that. Heart wards and it was sad, it was awful. But here they've seen apparitions on this side, coming up this staircase. So when you come up here, look down the hallway. Ronnie has some guests here. They had chased a person. They saw an apparition here during a public event. So if we have apparitions here, and they'll look at you and run. So right now we were assuming they're intelligent because they are responding and looking at you. These shadowy figures seem to be a common sighting here at the Harriman Hospital. And if Rhonda's right, and they do follow investigators and staff around, 
and then run when they're seen. It makes you wonder, what do we look like to them? This is I See You Critical. <sighs> Each room had a patient in it. Chris and I were here one night, a shadow took up that whole door and Chris was done. I was done, ready to go home. <laughs> You'll hear footsteps up here. This is another place that you wanna do EVPs. The last group tour we had here, we had people here that got a lot off of this floor. Uh, the blood pressure cuff was thrown off the wall onto the floor. They had to call for us, the crew person, to come upstairs because they wouldn't go in a room. They were afraid to. And when she come up here, it was just the cuffs to check your blood pressure. And the cool thing is, it's just as busy during the day as it is at night. This energy is just really thick up here. It I is. Mean, I don't know if you guys, as soon as we yes. cross the threshold, yes. said something I looked at no this is, is like, that's why I was like, Whew. I mean, you could just feel it. And it's not just because we came up no, this flight of stairs no. either. When we all crossed that threshold, I, I could kind of looked at you all because I was filming and I could kind of tell, at least with Noah and with Jason, you all were feeling something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was too. Jason has a very long history with ICUs and CCUs, don't you, Jason? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That was me, I'm sorry. You all right, man? Yeah, well, I'm just, I'm, I just, I'm feeling it. You know, it's yeah. tense up here. I'm, I'm feeling tense. It's just, I can feel it. So pay attention, listen, the hospital talks. These four floors that we've seen so far only make up the new addition to the hospital. On the second floor, down a long hallway, there are a set of doors that take you to the original hospital building. And there are parts of this building that date back to the 1930s. Down here to the left, this part, well, this part here down to the left was built probably 1953. These are two surgery rooms. And uh, the tile is really, everything is original from when it was built. And the green tile was when a doctor was doing surgery and he needed to rest his eyes. He would look up and then go back sure. to doing surgery because it, it didn't mess his eyes up. From that end, all the way down to the other end, this is a solid block you're going to be walking. So if you've been outside and made your tours, this is where you're going to be walking. When we go past the double doors right here, this is when you're getting into the patient's rooms. They delivered babies here. Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> hey there. Creepy Raggedy Ann doll. Yeah. There's a story behind this room. If you, if you go onto the Harriman page to look, one of our guests, Chris, Dev, and I were here at the time. Where, where Chris is standing, there was a picture of a little child. You could see knickers. That's all you can see is the legs down. This child's got knickers on. Standing right there in the doorway is a little girl with a hospital gown on. They caught that picture on their cell phone. So we know there are children. That's why we have a little toy room right here for the kids. We've had people here, kids running up and down this hallway. Here, we're in prenatal. This is where you had your babies. If these children are as interactive as Rhonda claims, we'll have to keep our eyes and ears open tonight. Who knows what could happen when the children start to play? The other night, Devin and I made our rounds through the hospital after our public event ended. We come through here, Cabinets are closed on both sides. We came back and the majority of the cabinets were opened when we came back through here. We've heard them slam, but this is the first time that we've ever seen them open. It's wild because so far, I mean, obviously there's, there's, there's shadow play, there's intelligent interaction communication, and there's footsteps, you have your knocking, things like that, doors closing, and poltergeist activity. You mentioned the cabinets, and earlier, you, you know, you had mentioned the chairs downstairs moving around. So, I mean, it's like the full nine yards here. At the end of the block-long hallway sits the geriatric mental health ward, a place for senior citizens affected with dementia or Alzheimer's, as well as other psychiatric or brain illnesses. They're all in lockdown. Uh, patients, uh, men were on one side, women were on the other side. And uh, they do have a kitchen here for the patients. They weren't allowed to go downstairs. Their food was brought up. And uh, they have a snack room around the corner. It's a smaller, long room. Uh, there's a lot of voices 
in that first room where the bed is. That's probably one reason why there's a bed in there. And uh, pay attention to where you're at. Look at the, uh, the benches right here, the nurse's station, because catty corner, this is where people get lost. The double doors right there will take you downstairs and that will take you guys downstairs to uh, the heart ward that was the heart ward before it got moved into the new part. This takes us to the last floor that we'll have access tonight, the first floor of the old building. And this is where one of the longest lasting ghost stories of the Harriman Hospital exists, the story of a nurse still on duty to this day. This was, when it first opened, this was uh, the registration, you came in here and registered. This room on the side was ICU. There were six patients, my grandma was here, she passed away here in ICU. My kids were born here, I was born here. When this place changed, this turned out to be the heart ward. Joanna was a nurse that worked here. She was on this floor, this was her station. She, uh, when she passed, they still see her, even her co-workers would see her wandering through the hospital. So she stays and she does her job. But Johanna isn't the only spirit who's said to remain on this first floor. There's one hallway that the staff and volunteers have dubbed the Shadow Hallway because of the number of shadow figures seen here. Here is the newest part that we opened. This is what we deem our Shadow Hallway. Devin and Chris were here. She's, she, they come and made the rounds. She can tell you what happened here. Okay, so it's about 4.30 in the morning. We're doing our rounds for the night. And so when we come down, usually Devin will go one way checking the doors. I'll go the other way checking the doors and the windows. We meet right here. So we both come here and turn the corner at the same time. Our lights shine down the hallway and standing in the middle of the hallway is this big tall man, big shadow man just standing there and the only way I can describe him is like a genie in a bottle. He actually sucks and goes back into a room. <laughs> you can actually even see the trail of him being sucked back into the room. I've never seen anything like that before in my life. It was nuts. Because this is the oldest part of the hospital. It's been here for all of its history. So there's no way to know who these shadows are. And when Heath tells us about a strange situation regarding a patient room in the shadow hallway, it makes it all the more intriguing. Supposedly patients kept dying and they, uh, they turned it into like some kind of offices instead of using those patient rooms because it supposedly had patients that kept dying. Kind of like bad luck. They felt like they couldn't use it anymore because they felt like yeah. Yeah, more patients died in there than anywhere else. Yeah, mm. it seemed that's like weird. They, yeah, it seemed like they put a patient in there, code blue, Whatever. And they were going, and at that time, one of our volunteers that worked here for 20 years, uh, Angel of Death, everybody's heard of the Angel of Death. Um, she passed a man, he nodded, she nodded, and they went on, well, there was a cold blue. And nobody could ever find that person again. One thing's for sure, the old Harriman Hospital still speaks. The things these walls have seen created paranormal activity that we hope will show itself to us tonight. All right, so we are getting ready to start our investigation tonight of the historic Harriman Hospital. This place is massive, it is huge, and we are gonna use that to our advantage, not just for our investigation, but also the Spirit Stalkers investigation here. So yep. make, make sure you head over to their channel and you subscribe because there's gonna be parts of this investigation where you will only get to see on their channel. So what we're gonna do, Jason, we are going to do our abandonment. But there are two separate buildings here at the Harriman Hospital, the old building and the new building. We're gonna set up abandonment in the old building. And while our cameras are rolling in that old building, completely empty, we're gonna be here in the new building and we're gonna be doing some challenges, right boys? Yes, we are. Yes, sir, it's my turn to pick. And so I'm gonna get Noah back for all the things he's done to me but then you guys are kind of thrown into that, so I feel bad for you, that's... <laughs> blame Noah, it's his fault. <laughs> My bad. Yes, they do on their channel challenges, every investigation, challenging themselves as paranormal researchers and just as people challenging their fear. So it's gonna be really interesting. They're gonna give us some challenges too, I think. So if you wanna see that, you gotta watch the Spirit Stalkers episode here at the Harriman Hospital. You ready to set up abandonment, Jason? Hell yeah, let's do this. Let's do it. 
Okay, so we have four cameras set up here in the old building of Harriman Hospital, built in the 1930s. This is the oldest structure here on the compound, and we have four cameras set up on the first and second floor. This first one where we're standing right now, this is the old surgical wing, and it was for major surgeries, open heart surgeries. Who knows how many people passed away in this general vicinity right here, and we have a REM pod sitting outside these doors in case anyone wants to touch it, in case any energies come near it. There's also a camera straight down the hallway here, all the way on the other end, pointed this direction. That's actually down by the mental health wing of this hospital. We have motion sensors set up in there as well as those vibration activated cat balls on the counter. So if anything touches them, they'll flash. Now down on the first floor, we have two cameras set up there. The first one is at the nurse's station where they say a spirit of a woman who used to work there named Joanna actually resides and talks to people. Jason has audio recorder down there on the counter, but that's that wide angle action cam. So it's gonna get the hallway, the nurse's station, and the other hallway going down the other direction. Down the long hallway, which they called the shadow hallway, we have a camera pointed back towards, at the far end, pointed back towards where Joanna's nurse's station is on that other end. So we have a mel meter set up in the hallway, and I even put one of those vibration activated cat balls on a chair in case anyone wants to sit down, light it up, or knock it off of there. So. We will see what happens when this is completely empty. You ready, Jason? Let's do it. You ready, boys? Yep, let's, let's do, it. do it, man. Let's go do those. Whoa. Rampot activity. Oh, well. You ready for the challenge? I they guess they're ready, too. too. They're ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll leave this here for you to play with, so feel free to touch it. Do whatever you want. We're going to get out of your hair. We're going to go over to the new building and uh, talk to some of the people over there. Yep. Let's do it. You didn't think I was gonna forget, did you? We're leaving! Okay. Way too dramatic. This camera, after sitting stationary for over 17 minutes, moves just slightly, as if someone touches the tripod or the camera itself. This is eerie, but will pale in comparison to what will happen in this area in about 30 minutes. This voice in the geriatric mental health ward is the beginning of what could be the strangest sequence of events that we've ever captured on an abandonment session. Three minutes after we capture this voice, the camera's audio captures footsteps that we know isn't us, 
because we're in the other building, a full city block away. And then, this happens. For the next eight minutes, this music stops and starts. It sounds like it's coming from some children's toy to the right side of the camera. So we asked Heath and Rhonda if there are any toys near this wing of the hospital that play this music we captured. In response, Rhonda sent us this video of the only toy to her knowledge in the entire hospital that plays music. The only problem is, this toy is in the first floor of the old building, in room 120 in the shadow hallway, as you can see from this clip later in our investigation. But in reviewing all of our footage, we also discovered this toy that appears to have musical buttons on the second floor, just around the corner from the camera. It being this toy makes a lot more sense because of its proximity to the camera that captured the music. But we have no idea who or what could be pushing the buttons on the toy. And because Rhonda told us the children on this floor like to play, It makes this so much creepier. This could go down in history as the strangest thing that we've ever captured on any abandonment session in Paranormal Quest history. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below.
you're probably wondering why we're wearing hospital gowns. But you have to go over to the Spirit Stalkers channel and watch their video to find out. <laughs> Let's start our own investigation here and see what happens. So we're headed right now down to what they call the shadow hallway. Okay. <sighs> All the toys in the middle of the hallway are very creepy. Reminds you that there are children that they've seen up here. Yeah, it's nice that at least they have some toys for them. It's, it's a sad thought. Yes. Remember, in this moment, Jason and I have no idea what we captured on abandonment. So it's chilling to watch us walk back through the area where the camera was set up and comment on the children and toys. If only we knew then what we know now. If there's any patients down here, my name is Ryan and this is Jason. Sitting right behind me. That sounds like something on this door. Whoa. Hello? Rembod going off. You can touch that. You can even get closer to it and it'll light up even more. Wow. Hey, thank you there. We would love to know your name. Can you move something or slam a door for us? Footsteps. Whoa. I think I may have gotten a light anomaly. Right over where you heard the footsteps from? Mm -hmm, like six, seven seconds ago. I haven't seen bugs in here. I haven't seen bugs flying around in here all day. No. If that's you, just to check and make sure that it is you interacting with it, can you stand right beside it again and go up to it and touch it? Would you like to have some company? We're here so that you can tell your story. We know there's probably so many people who passed away here at this hospital or had someone they know pass away in this hospital and we want you to have the opportunity to say something to us and speak to us and if you go up to Jason he has something in his hand there in his left hand it's a light and if you speak near it we'll get your message If there's anyone in here with us, you can use this box in my hand to speak and tell us your name. My name is Ryan, this is Jason. Did you hear something? I could have swore I seen like a ball of light flying right at me. Really? Down the hallway? Yeah, I swear to God I've just seen it. I just didn't say anything because I don't know what it was. But, yeah. Come into room 120 and speak to us. Please don't be afraid of us. We're here as visitors. Can you please come up and speak to us or show yourself? Can you tell me how many people lost their lives or passed away in this room?
What's wrong? I don't know. Like my eyes, I'm, I, I really shouldn't be looking at this screen because my eyes, I keep thinking I'm seeing stuff down here and I could have swore I'd just seen a figure, but you know, I keep going from this and then this and yeah. so I don't know. Is there someone down the hallway? Can you show yourself to us? You haven't touched that red light in a while. Can you touch that red light for us? I'm gonna shut this box off here because I haven't heard a single word come through. This is your chance. Can you come through and say hello to us? Yeah, literally nothing. Not a thing. Let me move this back to the side of the room here so we don't trip on it. Okay. Please come speak to us. I heard that, but I thought I heard something up above us. Really? Yeah. What'd you hear? It sounded like movement up here. Upstairs. Hmm. Was that you? You know, they say they see shadows crossing the hallway. Can someone walk across the hallway for us? Joanna, are you here? We heard you like to knock binders off when you're feeling a bit playful. You know, we'd love to see something fall off of this station here. You don't have to be afraid of us. I know you're probably not, but it's worth saying. We're not here to intrude or we really are friendly guys. We heard you spent a long time putting in a lot of hard work in this place. Can you tell us how long you worked here at the hospital? Ooh, EDI just went off. Temperature change and air pressure change. You not hearing that? I think it was straight over. Looks like 134 is where it came from. 134, okay. If there's someone in this room, we're trying to find the nurse, Joanna. Do you know where she is? Ooh, did you hear that? Yes, I did. That's what I was hearing. It's upstairs. We're going to have to go to the fourth floor. The second floor, you mean? Or second, yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go upstairs. We heard something. Okay. Up that way. What? We're going upstairs. It's up that way. <laughs> 
<laughs> is that what you said? No, that's what you said. Uh, did I? <laughs> You're like, up that way. Yeah, there's only one way to go. Thanks for clearing it up for me. Sounds like someone's moving around in here. Yeah. Hello? are here yeah it would be over in this area here because it was right above our heads it would have been here is someone moving around up here can you let us know where you are are there any children in here Jason's got a cool toy in his hand if you walk up to it it'll make the numbers change you want to try it Hello? Do whatever you need to do to speak to us. Whoa. That was loud, dude. Hello, was that you? Excuse me, ma'am. Are you a nurse? We're, we're looking for a nurse, maybe a doctor. We need x-rays. What do you think? You want to walk down towards surgery? Yeah. We spent about 20 minutes in this geriatric unit. And besides a few strange sounds, it was very quiet. This is surprising considering how active it was on abandonment. The toy that repeatedly played music for eight minutes in an empty hospital wing was silent. So let's hope someone wants to talk to us in the OR. We are sorry for what you had to go through in this room. Could you please tell us, my friend Ryan and I, my name's Jason, could you tell us what you see in this room? With Jason and I, all the way on the opposite end of the old building, a full block away from Joanna's nurse's station. The recorder that Jason left with the camera captures a faint and continuous beeping sound that almost sounds like a machine that hospitals use to monitor vitals. It's faint, so listen carefully. We're gonna have to head over to the new building here in a minute. The other part of the hospital. This is your chance to tell your story. To show the world that you're still here. Can you do that for us? What if I leave you in this room with this camera? I'll set it on this chair across the room and point it down this hallway. And then I go back downstairs and I collect the equipment from down there. 
And then I come back up here, and from there we can go to the new building. Sounds good to me. I feel like you may have something happen in here by yourself, so I'm gonna, since I don't have a tripod, I'm gonna use something just as right, just as well. A trusty chair. All right, I have no light, so we'll see how this goes, but I'll be right back. Okay. Damn, it's dark. Hello there. My name's Jason. What's your name? You don't mind me asking what kind of procedure did you go through in this room? I made it back. If you would like to talk, you can come into the room here with me. Nothing like using a cat ball as a flashlight. I'd love to get to meet you and speak with you. Just heard it. First I heard a metallic noise. Down the hall. Then it sounded like kind of movement or something faint. I don't mean to be intruding on you. I apologize if I am. Okay. Can you tell me the name of your doctor? Thank you for speaking with me. If you, you spoke to me, I may have not heard you, but thank you for your time. We'll have to head back into the other part of the hospital shortly. All right, Jason. You ready? Yeah. We are gonna split up again for this session and then we're gonna come back together yep. on the next session and do an Estes Method Spirit Box session in the temp in the ER with the temporary morgue. Okay. Yeah. So it's gonna be fun. You guys are headed over to the old building, right? Yep, yep. we'll be in the old building, explore the Shadow Man hallway and uh, see what we can capture over there. We didn't yeah. get much yet, but definitely there's a weird vibe in the new building. You guys should have fun over there. Absolutely. Yes. A lot of fun. We're going up to the ICU because we all know oh, Jason awesome. has history with ICUs. <laughs> yes. So, let's Good do luck. it. Let's all do right. it. We'll be over there. Good all right. Fellas. Good guys. luck. So where are we, are, are we doing? Fourth floor. Fourth floor. ICU, which not none of us have been there since the walkthrough. Even during the challenge with the spirit stalkers, you went second floor, I went third floor. So. Neither of us have been up there, but that was where you felt a really strong energy when we were on the walkthrough on the yes. tour. This energy is just really thick up here. It I is. Mean, I don't know if you guys, as soon as we yes. crossed the threshold, yes. Jacob said something I looked at no this is, is like, that's why I was like, Whew. I mean, you could just feel it. And it's not just because we came up no, this flight of stairs no. either. Oh yeah. Creepy, creepy up here. If there's anyone up here. What is happening? Scared me. <laughs> What's happening is, is my friend Jason and I were here to help you tell your story and what happened to you up here. We've heard that something terrible might have happened in this hospital to you. Or something terrible might have happened to you, I should say, to make you end up here.
Can you come out here to the nurse's station? I had an idea, Jason. Just give me one second. Okay. Are you getting on the bed? Yes. Is there a nurse out there that can help me? Or a doctor? Switch. Okay. Switch. What does that mean? I don't know. Maybe we should switch. Jump up here. I'll take that. Okay. That was a strange word. Feels like a water bed. It does. All right, we switched, just like you asked. Can someone go in there and help Jason? He did say when he was walking through here that he had a, I don't know what he said, a hamstring tear or something. Torn ligament. A torn ligament. I don't know if that would land him in the ICU, but. Can you let us know where you are by screaming or yelling or slamming a door? Or even if you wanted to just pull a funny prank on us. I'm going to leave Jason there for a second and walk down here. Can you say one of our names? So we know you can hear us? Can you please speak to me? Don't come in. Don't come in. Which room would you like us to stay out of? Can you give us a room number? I'm not looking. Now would be the time to slam a door if Matthew. you wanted to pull a prank on us. Hello, is your name Matthew? My name's Jason. Blessed. What did that say? Blessed. Bless. Well, thank you. If you want, you can also knock those balls that are on the nurse's station counter off. Jason's landed in the ICU because of some serious digestion issues. You've got a nice view of Harriman from your room here. Please come speak to us. Let us know you're here. There's a box in my hand if you'd like to walk up and try and use it to speak to me. Okay. Hmm. Whoa, it's picking up on crazy magnetic spikes after it said okay. Can you tell us why you're here? In the hospital? Or 
I wonder what it was about, because there's no electricity up here. Mm -mm. I wonder what it was in that hallway when we walked through. It was picking up on crazy magnetic spikes there. Whoa. Dead. Is it okay if we come into your room? Hide now. No, we're not going to hide. There's nothing to hide from here. Child. Child? Oh. Do you want to play hide and go seek? Do you want me to hide and you can come find me? I tell you what, I'll go hide and then you come find me and when you do, you make this box say something. So close your eyes. All right, I'm hidden. Can you come find me? Poke. Oh, wow. What did it say? It said poke. If this is a child and they found you, I mean, that might be a stretch, but that's Kind of weird to me because when children play hide and go seek and they find you, generally it's like they go, poke, found you. That is kind of strange. I guess you found me. Because you said poke. All right, we're going to go now. Ending goes to. Okay. Nothing too exciting, but that was a little bit of a bizarre situation there at the end. With one hour left in the night here at the Harriman Hospital, it's time to meet back up with Noah and Jake from the Spirit Stalkers to perform an Estes Method Spirit Box session in the emergency room. I'll be set up with the Spirit Box inside the temporary morgue, listening through headphones for responses as Jake, Noah, and Jason ask questions. I'll also be blindfolded while listening, so I won't be able to see or hear what's going on around me. I'll be fully immersed listening for voices, and when I hear something, I'll call it out. Once again, we'll be recording the spirit box that I'm listening to, so when I hear a voice, all of you watching at home will hear it too. Let's see if anyone wants to talk to us in the ER. Yeah, let me make sure I got this. Weird little part. Hmm, that's strange. <laughs> what was that? That wasn't. No, that would have been me. I wouldn't think. I mean, unless it. That was definitely not me. When you walked away, it pulled I, your I, static with you? I did this. That thing just went Thank crazy you. for a minute. Here, let me see that. Mike. That was weird, just saying that we wanted brim productivity. What? And it just went off? Yeah, that one just went off. Okay. It right. just did the red sensor and then just went off after like two seconds. Jeez. Did you see that? Yes. Oh. Rim pod. Whoa. Right there. Hello. Oh, it, like it just went to blue. Hello. Hello. Dude, that's all the way. Were you guys getting it like that earlier? Not that much. Dude, uh, I for light bar. Can you move the walker next to you? Could you answer my question for me so I can figure out who you are? Just touch the red light when I tell you who you are. Are you a doctor? Are you a nurse? Are you a patient? Are you a CNA? 
Okay, sweeping. Dude, that was weird. Oh, was he just going in there? Yeah, he was. Oh, was he just starting? Yeah, he just started. So Ryan is under on the spirit box right here behind you, uh, doing an S's method. And we're out here with Jason. Out here, dude, is where the ambulances would pull up. And you'd, yeah. you'd have injured people, whoever was coming in this hospital via ambulance would come right through here. Already got some REN pod activity. Um, I guess we just try to figure out who's talking or who, who is haunting this place. Just see what we can pick up on. Yeah. Well, he's in there. He's listening and everything, right? Yeah, he's yes. going. There's any spirits in here? Our friend in here, his name's Ryan. Um, he can hear you if you go in there and speak with him. So I'll back up actually a little bit. You can come through, go speak through him. He can hear you. Can you, if you understand, can you just say hello? Can you see us right now? Would you be able to tell us your name? I haven't heard anything yet, but I feel like someone just stepped in front of me in this room. Did I'm not sure if Noah's in here or not, but I just, it, I just felt it, like no. through the You're blindfold, not. I saw a shadow move across the room. What? Are you in there? Can you speak through him? Or whoever he felt. Very faint whispering man's voice. Nice. What? We understand that it may be difficult for you to Couldn't speak make it out. very loudly for us. If you can, could you please speak louder? You can use our energy. He's switching modes. Can you go talk to Ryan so we know that you're here? I thought I heard injured. What was your injury? Can you tell us what was injured? What happened to you? They can help. They can help. Who's here to help around us? Do you want us to help? Here. Man, I felt like something's touching me on the face, like in the neck. Dude, what? what is going that was the, creepy. Just in the door, man. Come in. Holy dude, dude. Dude, right when you just went in. Stay well, in there. Stay in there. Okay. Just record him. Do you like that I'm in here? That's weird, man. That is. Do you want me to stay in here? Set this up next to you. Okay. Okay, so we have a REM pod right there and a REM pod right here. What can I do for you? Are you in pain? Sounded like a little kid's voice, but I couldn't make out what it said. Something you at the end. Do you want me to help you? Are you glad that I'm here? Oh, same little kid's voice. Something about messy. It was messy, maybe. Can you tell us what was messy? You could touch these two red lights and they'll light up like this. If you do so, watch. Are you in the same room as me? Oh, wow. I heard, I heard that. that. Man's yeah. voice, it screams, says, waiting. What are you waiting for? Your room. Oh, man. Oh, what? Waiting on a room. We're sorry to hear that you're waiting on a room and you're here in the ER. Are you feeling okay? Could you tell us your name or give us a clue as to who you are? Because no one really knows. Do you want me to go find a nurse for you so we can get an open room? The 40s or... In my 40s, something like that. Oh, that's a clue. Hmm. 
Is that a clue? Are you in your 40s? Tell us how old exactly you are. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, it's possible. Anybody? That... What? Any... It's possible that he doesn't remember how old he is exactly. Yeah, he just knows like the general basis, the base. Or a guesstimate. Do you need to be checked up on still? Can I help you with that? I can go find you a nurse. 25. Whoa. 25. Are you 25? I'm right here. Uh, hello. What happened to you? Can you tell me why you're still here at the hospital? Oh, good. What can we do for you? To make you feel better. Are you in pain? Tell me where you feel pain. Bill. Bill. Bill? Bill. Is that your name? Can you give us a last name? Yeah. Well, here, Grandma. Do, do me a favor. If your name's Bill, or who, if your name's Bill, come on out here towards me. There's two red lights in this hallway. Can you touch one of those red lights, please? Sound like a man went, uh-huh. Okay. Come on out and touch the red lights. They won't hurt you, they'll just make a little noise. Let us know you're here. Ooh. Very quick man's voice. Can you repeat that? I don't think he heard you. Nope. Woman's voice. Did you work here? Hello. Ooh. Very clear woman's voice went, hello. Hello, are you a nurse? Listen, whoever's in here, I'm going to put my fingers up. Tell me how many fingers I'm holding up, okay? If you can see me. I'm trying to prove that you can see me. Pretty sure it just says four. Oh! It says four in the spirit wow, box. Wow, I just heard a man's voice say Harriman. Oh, wow. Dude, I thought I heard four too. <laughs> it definitely said four. Am I tripping? Can you say it again? When the man's voice said, all right, the muffled sound waves that Noah and Jake could hear escaping the headphones sounded like the number four, but unfortunately, there was no voice that said four. But shortly after, a man did come through and say the word Harriman, the name of the town that this hospital serviced. Pretty sure it just says four. Oh! It said four in the spirit Wow, box. I just heard a man's voice say Harriman. Is there any way you can make a loud noise or do something before we leave? I thought I heard a man's voice just say Noah. What? Hello. That's Noah right there. Can you tell me your and name? And then a woman's voice said, be a man. <laughs> Dude, they just told you to be a man. It might be because I'm sitting on this assist I don't oh. know what they're called. Get off of it. See if it happens. See if it helps. Okay. Here, switch me. Come out here and I'm going to sit in here. Oh, I was going to lay on the bed. He was? He was. Okay. I'm going to come in here. Can I land your bed? Do what? I'm going to come in here a little bit. Okay. Do you mind if I land your bed? You made it. I just, I just can't. I made it. Hey, we're not going to be here for a ton longer. You give us a hint as to who you are. I can still leave. What? what? So you can come and go as you please? <laughs> sounded like I'm going to have to bleep this out, but it sounded like a man said. Dude, that's the Noah. Be a man. 
This seems really... I don't think he likes me. No. Him or her? Do you not... Which one of us do you not like? Him or me? Or someone else? Maybe Ryan? Christian. Christian? Christian? We don't have anyone named Christian. Well, what if it's because I am a Christian? That was my first thought. Are you upset because I'm a Christian? Oh! Very aggressive screaming woman's voice just went, shut up! Bro, what? We don't mean to be intruding on you. That was creepy. You. Gave me chills. We're sorry if we are. Yeah, we're... Listen, we're not trying to intrude on your space or antagonize you or anything. We're just trying to communicate with you. Are you wanting us to leave? Just tell us to leave if you want us to and we'll, we'll go. You gotta tell us though. I keep feeling like a cold air on my face and like someone's touching me. No one's even near him. Who's touching? Who's touching him? Who just touched him? Are you upset? Are you angry? I'm not. I don't think we were being rude. Noah. What? I just said, are you upset? Are you angry? And it said, I'm not immediately after. Really? Okay, so you're chilling. You're not angry. That's all I like to hear. Hmm. We don't want any disrespect. We just want love and light and we want to communicate with you. Sorry, I gotta stop for a second. Ah, you're good. And with that, 4 a.m. has arrived. And that means our time here at the Harriman Hospital is over. When we arrived here at the hospital today, we had no idea what was in store for us. And we wouldn't fully understand what we captured until weeks later. This shocking evidence we captured during our abandonment will go down in history as one of the most bizarre pieces of evidence we filmed. Still to this day, we have no idea what was triggering the toy to play music, but whoever it was, we're glad they did. We want to thank the Harriman Hospital staff for allowing us to investigate this building, and we'd recommend this old hospital for everyone's investigation. Also, a huge thank you to Jake and Noah, the spirit stalkers. This night was so much fun and such a wild experience. We look forward to seeing where your journey takes you and watching your channel grow. All right, so we are officially outside the walls of the Harriman Hospital. It has been such a fun night. Really cool activity from what we said. I mean, you guys have to go watch Spirit Stalker's video because they heard, yeah. sounded like a door slam. Oh yeah. We heard like a door slam, some loud metal clanking sounds when we were over in the old building. We got more noise than we have on any other video. Yeah, it was crazy. When it comes to noise, noise evidence. Yeah. Sound evidence. And as you probably saw in this video, you saw what we got. So we want to thank you guys for watching all the way to the end of the video. This was fantastic. And that helps more than you know, watching all the way to the end. So make sure you hit that like button. If you liked this and you enjoyed the video, you want to see it shared out to a wider audience, hitting that like button helps a lot. Leave us a comment down below what your favorite area of the hospital was or what your favorite part of the investigation was. And make sure you leave a comment down below thanking Jake and Noah for a fantastic investigation. This was wonderful. So, Thank you guys. Absolutely. And we'll have to do it again soon. Of Definitely. Course. So hit that subscribe button, turn on bell notifications. Right, Jason? That's right. You know the drill. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time. It's been a blast. Peace.